Trish? Yeah. Don't sound anything like Colin. Hello, yeah. Trish. Um, I'd just like to say that Jaunty didn't have the ring after. Oh, well, we're glad to hear that. We've all been worried about it. The final vote, incidentally, is 24 people believe that... What was his name again? Tim the Jerk. 24 people believe that he was talking sense. And 198 think he was talking bullshit. Oh, I know where my sympathies lie. Thank you to all those people that called. A far, far better furniture store. At Minson's of Blackburn, a far, far better furniture store. For lounge, dining room and bedroom furniture. For famous names in quality carpets. For all home furnishings. Edmondson's offers choice. Edmondson's gives first class service. And Edmondson's guarantees value for money. All round a far, far better furniture store. At Darwin Street, Blackburn. A far, far better furniture store. Attention all decision makers, sales directors, sales managers and buyers. You cannot afford to miss the Lancashire Industry and Commerce Business to Business Exhibition at the Exhibition Centre Norbreck Castle Hotel in Blackpool. This extravaganza on a wide cross-section of industry takes place on the 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th of April with over 200 companies represented. It's the Northwest's leading industrial event. So make a date in your diary for the Lancashire Industry and Commerce Business to Business Exhibition at the Norbreg Castle Exhibition Centre 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th of April. It's the place to come where shopping can be fun. The new market Waterloo Road. Waterloo Road in Blackpool has a number of markets dotted along it, but two of them stand out from the rest. The New Market and M2 Market. They're both packed with top quality bargains to give you peace of mind when shopping. The New Market and M2 Market are also convenient because they're directly opposite each other on Waterloo Road, Blackpool. Don't settle for anything else and don't be fooled by imitations. The New Market and M2 Market are the original and still the best. It's the place to come where shopping can be fun. The New Market how do Jean? Hello, Alan. Do you know what I can't understand? Do you know how a young girl of 16 can go and get her own flat and yet she can't, cannot go and drink till she's 18? She cannot vote till she's 18. She cannot drive a car till she's 17. But they are allowed to go leave home and get a flat. Indeed, but of course no one has suggested for some years now that the age limitation regulations are actually sensible. What would you have happen? Do you want young girls of 16 to be entitled to vote? Or do you want the age limit for holding property to be amended? So what I'd like, Alan, is for young girls not to be able to leave home until they're a decent age, stay 18, when you are sure that you can't, they can't take care of themselves. Well, of course... One can never be sure at that, and perhaps if parents supported young people once they'd moved into flats, those young people would still be able to function properly in our society. Yes, but see... see it seems, Jean, that your daughter's left home. No, it, it did happen once, Alan, I'm playing to God, it never happens again. But your daughter's but left home? No, it... No, or did leave home. home now. Indeed, but she did leave home. Yes. Now, why did she leave home? Well, it's because she wanted to come in late of a night and I mm. wouldn't allow it. Yes. So, but if she got a flat, she could please herself what she'd done. Well, I worry about her a lot anyway when she's home. So imagine how I felt when she'd gone. She went for three weeks, actually. It would seem that she couldn't survive without your support. Well, I think she could survive, but it's just that I think she was a bit young to do that. She and she found that out for herself? Pardon? And she found that out for herself? Yes, yeah, she has, but... Uh, and perhaps it's the best lesson she's learnt in her life. Well, she's come back home anyway. Well, that isn't what we're interested in, but the fact is that it, she certainly learnt a first-class lesson, and I don't mean on the basis of, well, that taught her. I mean, she actually learnt a very good lesson. It was a good yeah. move for her. But at the same time, Alan, I have to go round begging her to come home. Indeed, but it, it is the role of the parent gene to suffer at the hands of their children. That is what parents have to do, whether they like it or not. My mother still worries about me. My mother is probably worried sick about the fact that I'm about to take a, a mortgage out on a larger house than I require, spending more money than I've got. And she'll worry about it. I'm 38 years of age this year. She still worries about me. That's what you're supposed to do when you're a mum. Yes, but I think what it is, Alan, with me, if she was a bit older, I think 
maybe I might you sort of accept the fact then. I don't think you would, Jean. Perhaps the reason she moved out was because you don't give her enough room to manoeuvre anyway. I don't know. I don't know the two of you, but that is a possibility. Yeah. OK, thanks, Al. OK. Yeah. When somebody moves out of a relationship, you must always look at the relationship and try and find the reasons why they moved out, not try to decry where they've moved to. Hello, Carl. Hello, yeah, Alan. Yeah. Uh, I recently listened to a James Stanich tape, and his methods seem similar to your own. I'm just wondering, have you copied any of his methods, or is all your ideas... Never original? in my life, Carl, have I ever heard a James Stanage programme or tape. So that is the answer to that particular it question. But... I dispute, on the basis of what many other people have told me, people in the industry, I dispute that this programme is the same as James Stanage's, although there are many similarities. I suppose in a, a programme like this you'd have to be, you'd have to have similar ideas and similar... Well, it is, there are constraints... People say it, there are constraints within the programme, of course there are, indeed there are certain rules that I will not break, there are certain things that I will not permit, there are certain processes that are inevitably identical, the process of a conversation on the radio late at night with all the freedoms that that provides. So obviously, yes, there are many similarities. But I am not James Stanage, I am not a reincarnation of him. Indeed, somebody spoke to him recently about me, they were doing a... a, a program, they were doing a, a newspaper article on phone-in presenters who've hit the fan, as it were, of which James is one, and his only remark was, good luck to him. Yeah. So quite right, too. So there's actually no way you could have copied him, because you haven't heard him? And well, the answer to your question, is there any way I could have copied him, is yes, of course there's a way. I lived in the area when James Stanage was on the radio, so could have listened to him had I chosen to, mm. and I could just be lying through my teeth now. It will be for you to decide whether I am or not. The fact is that I tell you I'm not, but let me tell you from nowhere, and I do not in any way mean this to be disrespectful to James Stanage, he wasn't the first. I don't suggest for one moment that James Stanage copied anybody, but in America there are wall-to-wall Bezics or Stanages or whatever name you want to give to them. Yeah. It seems that when he was on, it, thought, it seemed to thrive on praise. But when you go on, you, you seem to say, oh, I'm not bothered. And, you Carl, know, I... You, then, no, there's an extraordinary thing. You come on and tell me I'm the same as him, and now you tell me what the difference is. Well, like similar methods, such as in the abuse and the... the well, really, it's the abuse and the way, well, way you angle it. Other than I don't, the praise, I don't think I am abusive, you see. The difference well, is... You speak your mind, sir. Well, yes, but what's wrong with that? The first, the first person to speak their mind on the radio in a, a gruff sort of way was a guy called... and I've forgotten his name. Gilbert, was it? Yes, Gilbert. And I can't think of his other name. Gilbert Harding. Yeah. And he was doing it back in the 1930s. So I don't think you can accuse anybody of copying anyone in this business unless they're copying Gilbert Harding. And obviously we're not, because he was a, a much more gentle person than I am. Uh, James Stanage I've never heard. I wouldn't know whether he was more gentle or less gentle. Yeah. My information tells me that he eventually resorted to a degree of foul abuse that is not permitted. And I'm told, eventually, it, it diminished in audience. And, well, maybe this will one day, I don't know. Yeah, OK. OK? okay thanks, thanks very much to Ra. Did James Stanage play two nice records in the middle of his programme, I ask? Because if he didn't, there is another difference. Mind you, I've spent months trying to talk him out of making me do this. But I'd never get a piddle if I didn't. It's 25 minutes to one, and time after the break for the melodic moment. <laughs> Looking at Leo's Carpets for a beautiful new look in 86. We have the very best selection of carpets in the area, including a lion-sized range of wool carpets. In fact, if you can't find the carpet to suit you at Leo's, we don't think you'll find one anywhere. Leo's Carpets open six days and late night Thursday at Cherry Tree Blackburn, just 15 minutes from Preston, Chorley at East Lang. Leo's Carpets, Leo's Carpets. Easy to get to and no problem parking. Don't miss Act One's production of the musical Sweet Charity at Preston's Charter Theatre from April the 29th to the 3rd of May. Sponsored by MPH for Cena Windows of Preston in association with Red Rose Radio, Sweet Charity is the hilarious story of a warm-hearted girl who gives her love and her money to the wrong man every time. Set in New York during the swinging 60s, this musical experience includes such great songs as Hey Big Spender and If They Could See Me Now. 
Tickets are available from the Guildhall Preston priced at £2.50 and £3 with reductions for senior citizens, children and parties of ten or more. Get your tickets today. Commencing the 4th of April at the Wigan Little Theatre, Barry England's successful play, Conduct Unbecoming. Set in the turbulent days of the Raj of India, Conduct Unbecoming tells the story of a British officer and his misconduct with one of the ladies. The play takes place in the officer's mess and must not be missed. Conduct Unbecoming at the Wigan Little Theatre. Ring the box office now on Wigan 42561. That's Wigan 42561 to make your reservations. Blinking egg dead. Why don't you get a decent radio to match this flash car? Well, that one cost an arm and a leg, but it's never been much good. Ah, you need to contact West Orton Car Radio, mate. They've got superb systems by Blaupunk and Panasonic. Hey, and they've got the Blaupunk D-Stock range at less than half the normal price. None of this distortion like with one of them. Blaupunk what? Blaupunk. It's German, isn't it? I thought you were supposed to be brainy. Hey, you can also get electric windows, vehicle alarms and car phones fitted by... West Horton Car Radio. Oh, so find the right station with West Horton Car Radio, Church Street, West Horton. Phone West Horton 814 229 before you crack up. Looking at Leo's Carpets for a beautiful new look in 86. We have the very best selection of carpets in the area, including a lion-sized range of wool carpets. In fact, if you can't find the carpet to suit you at Leo's, we don't think you'll find one anywhere. Leo's Carpets open six days and late night Thursday at Cherry Tree Blackburn, just 15 minutes from Preston, Chorley and East Langs. Leo's Carpets, Leo's Carpets. Easy to get to and no problem parking. Attention Lancashire businessmen. Issue 2 of Red Rose Radio Business Wise will be hitting your desk soon. It's bigger, better and glossier than before and carries the support of national companies like British Nuclear Fuels, British Rail and the NatWest Bank. Business Wise is the magazine that talks about Lancashire business and is mailed to 15,000 chief executives by Dun & Bradstreet Marketing Services. Issue 2 includes articles on Preston Docks, company cars, executive dining out, Blackpool Airport and town planning, plus a brand new feature, BusinessWise Help, which offers assistance to business problems. For more information on this unique marketing concept, contact Alan Seymour, sales manager at Red Rose Radio on Preston, 556 301. Look out for Red Rose Radio BusinessWise. We mean business. Bring him if you dare. Alan Bensick, the late night show. Time to recommence the phone in. If you want to join us, of course, the number is Preston 561000. <laughs> I'll do Jeff. Hello, Alan. I was wondering if you could help me. You see, we're being attacked by killer hot water bottles. It's a terrible fate, but I suggest you surrender and wear bed socks. How do, Ian? Hello, Alan. I, I want to talk about the needless loss of life in classrooms. In classrooms? Yeah, of, of small animals in biology lessons. Oh, I see. Go on. Well, I think that it's a needless waste of life 
and they could just as easily be done with videos, etc. Why did the children need to cut them up? I suppose you're right in that you could halfway teach people with videos, but there's no experience, no teaching method better than actual experience. But couldn't they use models instead? It's very difficult to cut up a model twice. Well, not maybe cut up, but it'd give you all the information they'd need, surely. It why would give you the information, but it wouldn't give it you in such a memorable way. Well, why would they want to cut it up anyway? I have no idea why they would want to cut it up, other than to learn biological fact about other creatures. Well, there's no need to cut it up, is there? They could easily learn it, like, up, off a video of someone cutting it well, up. Well, the answer, Ian, is that you wouldn't learn it as easily from such an experience. It is a proven fact that more people or more retention of information exists when one engages in the practice yourself instead of yeah. watching others do it. Okay. okay. How do you jump? Yeah, I would. I'll just phone you up for when's your next Magic at Large? The next one is sold out. That's a week on Saturday in Skelmersdale. <coughs> that's on the <coughs> 12th of. Well, that's an argue with Alan rather than a Magic at Large. That's for charity. We're then our very next Magic at Large is. <coughs> On the 24th of May in Ulverston, we're negotiating at the moment to do one in the Preston area about that time. I am negotiating with Blackpool to do one before then, so I don't know. But the next one that's booked is in Skelmersdale on the 12th of April. That's sold out. The next one proper is on the 24th of May. There's another one um, that we're doing for University Radio... Bale Rig, which is the radio station within the University of Lancaster, and we're doing that in the Nuffield Theatre on the 3rd of May. Yeah, is there no chance of you getting over our end? Well, it depends where your end is. Oh, yeah, Bolton. Round, uh, you know, round Bolton way. There's every chance. It's a matter of not being able to get to them all and to get everywhere. There's every reason in the world why I should do Bolton, just like there is why I should do Wigan, and eventually we'll get round to it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not bothered if I've got travel a bit, but like, like you said, you're booked up, aren't you, know? Well, I'm booked up for Skelmersdale. If you, yeah. if you care to travel to Ulverston, you're more than welcome. Well, <laughs> or even... or Well, we're certainly going to be doing one in Preston quite soon. I'm not sure when, so that's fairly close. But what? we'll be coming down the southern part of our region also quite soon. I just don't really know when. It's a matter of organising. You see, as I was saying in an earlier call, I don't have an agent or anything like that. So I do all the work myself. And it's not easy to get round and see all the theatres and check them all out. So one takes, takes time to do through the year. We'll be doing Blackburn again later this year, probably in the autumn. Yeah, yeah, well, I've just, just been thinking, like, you could give me a job, couldn't you, your agent? I'll make a few bob. Uh, the, you, know, you may well make a few bob, but unfortunately I don't agree with agents. Oh, well, I'll be your best mate, then. Well, my best mate <laughs> doesn't get paid. Oh, cheers, Owen. Cheers, <laughs> Tara. <laughs> How do Roger? How do Darren? Fucking Darren. Who are you? Are you Roger? Yeah, oh, I'm wasting my breath. How do Darren? Hello. I'd just like to tell you a joke. Sure you would. Shame we won't hear it, really. Hello, Steve. Hello. I, I'm phoning to talk about cigarette smoking. I, I think that the government health warning on them is wrong. I think I don't think they should put anything like that on them. Why not? Well, I've smoked since I was 12. Then you're a prat. How do, Stuart? Uh, hello, Alan. I'm phoning about uh, lead, the lead ban they're trying to put on fishing weights. Go yeah. on. What, well, what do you think? Do you think... They said you were phoning about it. You haven't got an opinion. I don't know why you bothered wasting your money. Hello, Andy. All right, Alan. Uh, what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? A stick. Oh, you know that one. Of course yeah. I do. How do, Tim? Yeah, I'm phoning about dog licences. Go on. I don't think there should be any such thing as a dog licence, really. Why not? Oh, well, I think dogs should be allowed to roam around, and cats as well, as free as they want to be. Do you? Yeah. And I'll tell you why, because they serve a great service to society. Yeah, crapping on the pavement is one of the best services we can have. How do, Ian? Yes, Alan, I'd like to know your opinion. Well, you're wasting your breath, then. How do... I'm sorry, I never got that one, Alice. Phil. How do, Phil? Hello, Alan. Um, I'd like to talk about your opinion on uh, football hooligan. Yeah? Talk um, about it. Well, um, few... 
well, a few weeks ago, you made the opinion of uh, the idea to curb it is to um, ban football altogether. Is uh, is that right? I certainly said that, and you must admit that would stop it. Yes, it would stop football hooligans as such in the name, but uh, it wouldn't stop the minority of cretins that's going round um, actually doing the harm in the uh, football stadiums. It would stop them doing it in the football stadiums. Yes. You're trying to suggest that those groups of people would perform their violence elsewhere. Yeah. Now that is certainly possible, but we'll never find out until we try it. Well, what I'm trying to say is, you must agree with this, that they uh, don't go to watch the football. I'm not sure that I do agree that with that statement entirely. They certainly don't go simply to watch the football, but they do go out of a partisan drawer, as it were. They are part and parcel of the partisan of football. They go to fight the enemy. Yeah. Now, if you remove the field of battle and you remove the concept of an identifiable enemy, you may well, in fact, remove the troops. Well, let's just put an hypothetical situation. That's what we are talking about at this moment, a right. hypothetical okay. situation, but do go on with your right. one. Right. OK, let's just say we ban football altogether, right? Now, there's other minority sports that's going about, like um, cricket, rugby league, various other sports. Mm -hmm. Now then, don't you reckon, well, that they what might... What do you think, Phil? Well, I reckon that... The, they turn the hand to some other sport just that to fight is, the enemy. That is perfectly possible. Yeah. Well, but of course, they will only do that if they know that the enemy is there, and of course the enemy may well not be there. Yeah, well, my own opinion on it, myself, is that the hierarchy of the football, the chairman, the money men... Right? I know who you mean by the yeah. top of the hierarchy, yes. Yeah. Uh, spend a few, you know, few bob, yeah, a few bob, putting these video cameras in. Well, that is already underway. Yeah, well, uh, they've not got it in such uh, proportion that's needed to curb these people. As far well, as I'm concerned. There is currently an experiment underway to discover well, whether that would be the solution. It would be futile to have the, what you describe as the hierarchy, the managers of football, and by that I mean the financial managers of football, to spend large quantities of money on something that they later find out didn't work, because then they won't have the money to find out whether something else will work. So it is right that research is underway, and when the results of that research are available, I'm sure the government will bring in legislation in accordance with that research. Hello. Oh, Alan, what? can I just say, can you be a bit uh, selfish? I always am. Yeah, be a bit selfish and try and play a few more tracks of the Elkie Brooks record. Well, I'm sure I'll get round to it eventually <laughs> one day. I, I'm becoming sick of it, actually. I've had it in the car for three days. So <laughs> I've just got it. It's brilliant LP. It's an excellent LP. We okay. advocate it for everybody. Yeah, OK. Sarah, so, how do you roger? Hello, Alan. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to talk about our annual bonus at the works. What the annual boss, bonus? Last year, we didn't have an annual, annual bonus. Well, it's not an annual but bonus, then, if you didn't month, get it, It's did due you? again. And we have not nothing. Tough. Is there anything I could do about it? Yeah, go and get a job somewhere else. I'll do... to somebody else. Oh, John. Alan, could you tell me what's happened to the drink sarsaparilla? It still exists, but it's not the same. Bars, B-A-R-R-S, still make a sarsaparilla, but it's not as good as the old stuff you used to get off that company called Bolton Direct that brought it in stone jars. Yeah, I've been looking all over for it and I can't find it. Well, you no do way. see it occasionally. The nearest you can get to it these days is Dandelion and Burdock, which is similar but not as good. No, it's not. Oh, it's, it's, it's similar. Yeah. But I... it's not as good. Right, thanks, Alan. It's a pleasure. Sarsaparilla, those were the days. Who was it? Who was the cowboy? Who was the cowboy that used to drink sarsaparilla? The first one that tells me that on the phone-in gets a T-shirt. There, how about that? Who was the cowboy that used to drink sarsaparilla? You've got the rest of the evening, about an hour and three minutes, because it's three minutes to one, to tell me. Preston 561000, who was the cowboy that drank sarsaparilla? The Italian Orchard of Broughton is one of the finest restaurantes and pizzerias in Lancashire. 
Spread over two floors with ample car parking, the Italian Orchard provides the perfect setting for dinner seven nights a week and for Sunday lunch 12 till 3. Large parties are also catered for. Make your reservation now on Broughton 861240 or call in at Whittingham Lane, Broughton. It's the place to come where shopping can be fun. If you want to shop for the real bargains, you'll be well advised to visit the New Market and M2 Market on Waterloo Road, Blackpool. They're over the road from one another, which makes shopping for bargains all the more convenient. But beware of imitations. When you've found the New Market, you've found the M2 Market, and vice versa. Shop at the New Market and M2 Market, opposite each other on Waterloo Road, Blackpool. They're the original, and they're still the best. It's the place to come, where shopping can be fun. You can help clean up crime and drug abuse in Lancashire by ringing Crime Phone on Preston 612222. The lines open 24 hours a day and any information you have will be treated in complete confidence. Lift a finger to help the police by ringing Crime Phone on Preston 612222. How do Bob? How do Bob? Who have we got on seven? Bob. How do Bob? Are you going to talk to us? I give up. How do Alan? Hello, Alan. Uh, I'd like to talk about the DHSS, if I may. Go on. Uh, well, as far as I understand, under the present system, um, if you are made homeless and then apply to DHSS, they tell you that you can't actually apply until you get a, a permanent address. It's not I absolutely think, correct, but go on. I think that's wrong because... How You're right, it is wrong. You can get supplementary benefit without having a permanent address. Oh, well, I rang... I rang... If you wish to join us on the phone in, you've got exactly one hour, because it's now very nearly at least one o'clock. Indeed, it's only four seconds away. Time now for the news from IRN. The one o'clock news. This is Mike Carson. A previously unknown pro-Libyan group says it planted the bomb which exploded on a TWA jet over Greece, killing four people. A man claiming to represent al qassams revolutionary cells, says the bomb was in revenge for American imperialist aggression. al qassam was a Palestinian guerrilla who fought the British occupation of Palestine in the 1930s. There's been no comment from the police on the group's claim. The four people who died, including a baby, were found in fields 80 miles from Athens. As our aviation correspondent Paul Maurice reports, it now seems certain that the bombers were airport workers rather than passengers. The explosives blew a hole in the side of the plane and aviation experts are now certain that the bomb was placed inside the inner lining of the aircraft, perhaps even against the aluminium hull. This makes it likely that the terrorists who placed the device were airport workers or ground staff at Cairo, Athens or Rome. Again, as in the previous TWA hijacking on the same route last year, Cairo is the favourite, with an airport where hundreds of unvetted staff are employed to clean and service the planes. It's a security gap that British pilots are demanding should be plugged. Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev is urging President Reagan to reconsider Soviet proposals for nuclear test ban talks following Washington's rejection of the idea. Mr Gorbachev says the Reagan administration's refusal to join in Russian moratorium on nuclear testing was damaging to the improved relations achieved at November's Geneva summit. Education Secretary Sir Keith Joseph is to address a major teachers' union today, only hours after they pass a motion of censure against him. Sir Keith will be justifying his policies to the NASUWT's annual conference in Scarborough, and the union leaders have asked delegates to be polite to him. Mark Mardell reports. The NASUWT is bound to pass a motion condemning Sir Keith for presiding over the dismemberment of the British Education Service. Later in the afternoon, the man himself will address the conference. The union's Nigel de Grucci says the Secretary of State has a dramatic effect on teachers. I've never known a Secretary of State for anything, let alone education, be so unpopular with the people whom he was supposed to serve. You mention his name and teachers almost shiver 
with anger. But the union says there'll be no trouble. School teachers are firm, but polite. Mark Modell, IRN, Scarborough. The Conservatives have lost more than half their votes in universities and colleges since the 1983 general election. That's according to a Marplan poll published today. The survey carried out for the National Union of Students indicates only 17% of students would now vote Tory, compared with 35% for Labour and 27% for the Alliance. The main vote losers for the government were shown to be the cuts in student grants and in social security benefits. NUS President Phil Wallace claims a drop in student support for the government could mean them losing 60 seats, which the union says have a greater student population than the sitting MP's majority. Independent Radio News. Ring him if you dare. The late night show. Preston, five six one thousand. If you want to join us, give us a ring. I'll do, Colin. Hello, Alan. I'd just like to pick it up about the comment you made about a couple of days ago about how you feel um, art subjects shouldn't be um, paid, for, paid for by the government. I think that's um, basically wrong, actually. Because um, to use such a general term as art, it's just, um, it's too broad a subject to def- define. I mean, take Name a- one subject that you would define as art that you would be prepared to defend for government support. Okay then, say um, graphic art, the design of packaging, and um, say um, TV advertising. They'll come under the heading. I see no reason whatsoever why we should spend taxpayers' money to educate people in an ability to drive, dry, design packaging and indeed an ability to make television adverts. As far as I'm concerned, they are art forms that people... You either design a practical package, and that's not an art form, or you design an artistic package. The two may meet, but I'm sorry, I don't want people at university learning how to design artistic packages. I don't want people at university at my expense and other taxpayers' expenses designing anything of that ilk. Um, Without design, though, I mean... Packaging is important for a selling point of... um, I'm not interested in people... I'm sorry, I don't consider that if you were saying that packaging is part of marketing, then roll it into a marketing course if you must. But I don't want people going to university at the taxpayer's expense and learning how to make pretty packets. I'm sorry, it's not I a don't. It's of um, pretty packets. I mean, um, say, for example, a package has to be appealing to the con- consumer. Otherwise, no, it doesn't. Going to buy no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. I'm not slightly naive, if you actually aren't. Well, it isn't slightly naive. I've <laughs> never bought anything in my life simply because the uh, packet yeah. was good. I buy the product. There um, are some jerks out there that buy pretty bags. I don't. I buy the product. Well, like, uh, and it's only the existence of stuff heads that have gone to university that try to convince the public that they ought to buy a pricky package. Stuff your pricky, pretty package. I'm interested in what's inside. If I don't like the taste of your beans, I don't give a toss what you sold them in. Well, like, you are a very, um, small potential of the general public. Exceptional is the word you're seeking. And as an exceptional member of the general public, I'm not prepared to spend any of my income tax, or would like to be able to not spend any of my income tax, so that some jerk can come on the radio and tell me that I ought to buy the beans in the pretty packet. I'm sorry, I think it's bullshit. How do Vince? Hello, Alan? Hello? Hello, Alan? Well? Well, what do you want? Hello, Alan. I'd like to just voice my opinion about a programme what me and my brother and my cousin was watching tonight were. There was these people, I think it must be the biggest rip-off in 86, these people paid £50 a time to this so-called hypnotist or whatever it was to walk barefoot across red-hot coals. And he said after they'd made this walk across these red-hot coals they'd be able to face up with their everyday stresses and problems in life. Now... When these people were walking across these calls, there was a team of university professors, etc., who were monitoring the blisters on the feet and this, that and the other and whatever. And they drew the conclusion that if the human foot was only on the calls for 0.9 of a second, that it wouldn't be sufficient to burn them. But the 
hip, not the hypnotist or whatever it was, he reminded me of Charles Manson, incidentally. He said that he could endure it for 1.5 seconds, and the professor said, uh, uh, sorry, the professor said, yeah, that he couldn't endure it. Anyway, just to make my point, the, he tried to do it at 1.5 seconds, and he burned his bloody feet like, and he went scuttling off into into this bath of cold water like. Yeah, seems to be justice uh, rules okay. How do Tim? I want to talk to you about domestic animals, Alan. Go on. And don't cut me off like you did last time. You want to talk about domestic animals, get yeah. on with it or you will be cut I, off. Well, all right then, I want to talk about the advantage they have on human society. I'm sure they do have an advantage on human uh, society. I'm sure you remember when you was young that you watched a dog having pups and a cat having kittens. Well, I didn't, actually, but go on. Oh, well, I did. Now, Fine. All this, all this sex job in schools about teaching kids about sex, that is not p necessary, because if people have domestic animals, they see sex in the raw, and they don't see it. So it's worth having domestic animals so your kids can watch them screwing? No, I didn't say screwing because... You said sex in the raw, no, that's no, screwing me. That's, that's being vulgar, Alan. Vulgar it might be, but that's what you're well, saying. No, no, I'm not saying that. A good that's idea. I've got to put up with crap no. on my pavement because you want your kids to watch no. two dogs screwing. What are you, some kind of pervert? No, no chance, no chance. Well, see what you sound like I to said me, pal. most kids watch and the people... I don't accept that most kids actually see... I mean, yeah, I we've see. all seen two dogs stuck well, together. I'm, I'm but I do not accept that I'm most older kids... Than you, Alan. I'm older you, Alan. I don't give a toss how old you are. You don't get clever by being old. And if you want evidence of that, look oh, in a mirror. You do get clever. Oh, go to bed, you drunken clown. How do, John? Hello, Alan. What? Yes, I'm just ringing about the cowboy who drank the sarsaparilla. Go on. Was he called Tom Brewster? No. No. That's true. It's not true. What was the Cowboy series called? Tenderfoot. Oh, it was Tom Brewster. Thank you. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> yes, it is. I'll tell you what to do. Stay on the phone line, okay. right? And our Alice will come back to you in a moment's time on Thank line you. four, and she will take your name and address. Thank you very much, Alan. All right, and you will have a T-shirt sent very much. to you. You deserve it. Thank you. Hey, Tenderfoot. Yes. Tenderfoot. Can you sing the song? Uh, no. No, turn the No, but that wasn't part of the band. No, it wasn't. Alan. I agree with that. I'll just send you one of the sleeves. Turn the foot. Turn the foot. Yeah, Never know. underestimate a tender foot. Yeah, I'm not. It's yeah. true. It's true. It's all in the raw. Sure. Tom Brewster and Tenderfoot. Smart as out. John, you have a T shirt. Thank you. Our Alice will take your name and address now. Stay where you are. Alice will take your name on line four. Who have we got on five, Alice? <laughs> Lynn. How do Lynn? Hello, Alan. Yeah. Uh, the lady that rang up before about the animals, you know, who were using in the schools and what have you. Well, it was a young man, actually, but go on. Oh, well, it sounded like a lady. You, you do when you're a young man. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what I wanted to say was, when I was at school, uh, in biology lessons, we were made to dissect a worm, uh, skimming it down the middle and pinning it back by the skins at the sides. I hope nobody's eating spaghetti at the moment, but uh, go on. <laughs> they were, no. And I was, that revolted. I mean, I, I've just got a squeamish stomach and I couldn't do it. And I ran out the, ha the classroom and I was violently sick in the grid. And I got detention and the cane for not doing what I was told in biology. Good. And I think that's disgraceful. I agree with you. Oh. <laughs> right. I don't think you should have been cane. No, well, I think I must admit, I would have probably ate the worm. I did as a child. I used to eat the damn things. The worms and coal. I don't know which I used as a main course, but I apparently used to eat worms and coal. Oh, that's child. horrible. Give over. I think really, that I think really that biology lessons, the basics, uh, sort of the theory side, everyone... Everyone should put up with it, but I think the basic side, you should have a choice whether you want to take it or whether you don't, because it really knocked me sick that afternoon. Well, it's perhaps done you some good for the future in one way, anyway. No, I won't even know. put a head off the fish now. <laughs> Will you not? <laughs> no. <laughs> Quite right, do. Anyway, Lynn, I'm sorry it made you poorly. Eh? <laughs> OK, bye, Alan. I'll do, Barbara. 
Hello, Alan. Hello. I'm second online to say Tom Brewster. Thank oh, you. well, you're too late, you see. We've given it away. Yeah, it's a bit... L but you live and learn. We never knew it was called dandelion and burdock. Did you not? Well, it's not. There are just similarities, that's all. Sarsaparilla is, is very similar to dandelion and burdock. Dandelion and burdock's a lot more fizzy than sarsaparilla ever was. I've been drinking dandelion and burdock for years and, and never knew it was And sarsaparilla. you didn't know you were a tenderfoot. So we don't get a T-shirt... I'm afraid not. You've got oh. to be the first. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I'm not sure I'd send someone with a foreign accent like yours anyway. It's a change from a scouser.